In this episode, Jeb and Bob are once again going interplanetary to satisfy the contract, Explore Eve. This contract requires us to perform a flyby of Eve and return back to Kerbin. In the previous tutorial, I accomplished this by first getting a low orbit capture about Eve and then returning to Kerbin using the game's built-in maneuver tool. In this video, we're going to do this by performing a true flyby, never getting a capture of Eve at all. Though this technique is more fuel efficient, it has the disadvantage of ejecting the vessel from Eve's SOI on a trajectory that is unlikely to intercept Kerbin. As such, I'll be looking at how to facilitate a Kerbin intercept in a fuel efficient manner. Moreover, once mastered, this technique can be used to get intercepts of other planets in the system as well, allowing you to slingshot your way through the game's solar system. Finally, I'm going to take a closer look at the game's built-in alarm clock and the source of a bug that often shows up when going interplanetary that can easily result in you blowing by SOI changes. Let's get started. Although I feel the ideas presented in this tutorial stand on their own, this is the second of a two-parter. It was in part one that I went over the build of this vessel, launched it, and sent it on its way to EVE. In addition, I completed the Explore EVE contract by capturing into a low orbit about EVE, where Jeb and Bob spent some time before burning back to Kerbin. So if you have not seen that episode and are interested in its details, you will likely want to check it out. What I'm going to do here is revert back to the point where Jeb and Bob just crossed into EVE's SOI and follow an alternate and more efficient course to get them back home. All right, so let's take a look at this as how we want to do this if I wanted to do a proper flyby and get myself back to Kerbin. So I'm back to this situation where we're coming around Eve, not doing the capture. My periapsis is at 120 kilometers, comfortably above Eve's atmosphere. And let's scroll out and see what our trajectory is like as we come out from Eve. And you can see here it is here. And actually our periapsis is coming out well, below Eve's orbit and above Moho's orbit, something like that. Eve is actually slowing us down even further. We're getting a gravity assist, but it's in the wrong direction. I would like to get a gravity assist back out towards Kerbin. Well, if I see that it's in the wrong direction, what that's telling me is I'm on the wrong side of Eve. So what I need to do is fix that. And you want to find out which way is the more efficient in the situation that you're in. So you can do that by simply adding a maneuver going over to here giving yourself a let's see it's set to one meter let's put it up to 20 meters per second what if i go in a radially indirection okay that made that much of a difference let's undo that and now let's try retrograde 20 meters per second and that made much less of a difference so you can see that it's the radially in part that's having the greater effect in this situation you want to kind of test these things out. So here we are, we're now coming the wrong way around. We, we're going to have to do an extra 100 meter per second burn, but that's not a problem. In fact, I don't even need, now that I know that it's just radially in, I don't even need the maneuver. I can just put the vessel on the radially in vector and start burning. And I got my thrust really low. There's no rush. Of course, this would have been a trivially small adjustment if I had made it back with the mid-course correction on the way to EVE, but I'm stuck with the trajectory I had when I came in for my low orbit capture last episode. So we're just coming around. We're actually flipping our orbit here. Notice that this switched to now radially out rather than radially in. That's okay. It's still the same direction. Okay, 121, that's fine. <laughs> All right, so now let's take a look at what our trajectory ended up being as we come by Eve now. You can see now that our trajectory is out a little further than it was before, but still not anywhere near getting to Kerbin. Now, what can you do to fix that? You got two options. Number one is to keep doing what you're doing. If I put a maneuver here, I can show you. If I keep burning, well, in this case now radially out, since our orbit has flipped, if I keep moving this radially out, you can see that we are in bringing up our apoapsis out towards Kerbin's orbit to about there, okay? So again, our inclinations aren't right, but we'll fix that once we're in interplanetary space. But you can see, that maybe a little bit more 
that that is getting us a flyby and getting us going towards Kerbin. No intercept yet. We haven't figured out the timing portion of this, but this at least gets us going in the right direction. And we can do that. That's fine. The problem with this is, is while I've pushed my periapsis out quite a ways from Eve, I'm no longer going to get my near space science. And I kind of want the near space science. So if you want to do that, you can see it's a further 240 meters per second. I can do this and I'm on my way towards Kerbin's orbit. That's fine. But what I'm going to do instead is delete this and instead I'm going to put a maneuver right down here at my closest approach now this is going to be a prograde burn and whenever you're doing prograde or retrograde burns if you have the option you always want to do it as close to the parent body as you can so that you can take advantage of what's called the Oberth effect so I'm gonna put in prograde and we'll come out here and we'll take a look at what's happening so if I do prograde, you can see here it's pushing out that apoapsis right there. So the apoapsis is being pushed out, pushed out, pushed out. And again, until we get out towards Kerbin like that. Again, no Kerbin intercept just yet. That's coming. But at least we're getting ourselves going in the right direction. You can see it's more than just doing that kind of free return type of flyby that I showed you earlier. But it's less than capturing and then coming back out again. Okay, so with that, we will again collect our science and then get ready to perform this burn. Now we're only about five minutes from the burn, but we're also getting close to near space. Remember near space occurs at 400 kilometers above Eve's sea. So keep an eye on this burn. Unfortunately, we're going very fast and the burn's kind of a long one. So we won't have much time, but you do want to grab what it is that you can. Don't forget, you can also grab it on the other side of the burn. But as soon as we cross 400 kilometers, I'm going to be collecting as much science as I can before I have to put my attention to the burn. Okay, let's just delete the maneuver node and we'll finish the rest of this off while lock the prograde. There we are, that's good enough. And after frantically collecting the last of the available science before climbing above 400 kilometers again, there was nothing left to do but the time warp until we were once again outside of Eve's SOI, ending our brief visit with the Purple Planet. Alright, we are now orbiting the Sun once again, and it is time to see what we can do about getting a Kerbin intercept. So, we will set Kerbin as target. And I can see that we're coming north of Kerbin's orbit. Now you don't need to match inclination, so rather than putting a maneuver at the ascending node here, it'll be cheaper and just as easy to put the correction at about a quarter of an orbit ahead of Kerbin. And we're not trying to match inclinations, we're just trying to get an intercept. So you can see the AN coming towards where our apoapsis is, and the AN is showing where the orbits cross, so right about there, you can see maybe a little bit of prograde. I can see that too from here. So a little prograde, little AN. Okay, so what we're getting is we're getting our closest approach here, but you can see our target is here. Not surprisingly, just because we just whipped by Eve and not really considered where Kerbin's position was, we are not getting an intercept. One step at a time. Let's first perform this plane change. And there's no reason for this wait for this to go down to zero. We're just going to punch it right about here. And once this burn was completed, it was time to go back to map view and see what we got for our situation. We are at least now crossing Kerbin's orbit. Now what we need to do is cross at the same time that Kerbin happens to be there. So the first step in all that is to figure out, well, on which orbit is this going to be the closest? Yes, we are probably going to have to do a few orbits. So what you do is you put a maneuver node just out past these close encounter indicators out here somewhere, let's say. We're just going to add a maneuver. Now we're not going to put anything in that maneuver, but in putting it past these close encounter indicators, it's now showing me what the approach is going to be like on the following orbit, the subsequent orbit after this maneuver node. And you can see, well, it's even worse. So what we can do though is, well, what about the next orbit? Just go down, hit plus one more orbit. So now this maneuver is another orbit in the future. 
Again, doesn't look too good. Go another orbit in the future. And oh, look at that. So a few orbits in the future, albeit, you know, in over a year, well over a year, almost two years from now, we are getting a pretty decent encounter in two years from now. So what can we do to actually facilitate this encounter and do it super duper cheaply? What you do is you put another maneuver on your current orbit. So make sure that this maneuver is fairly close to now. So 53 days in the future, not on the projected orbit after this maneuver. Move it towards your apoapsis right out here. And then what we need to do is subtly tweak our period so that instead of missing by 260, what is that? 262,000 kilometers, we're going to be intersecting with Kerbin's SOI. Now you may need to go a little bit prograde. You may need to go a little bit retrograde, but the key is it's only going to be a little bit. So I'm going to turn this down just a little bit. Let's push a little bit on the prograde and actually let's watch the numbers. So prograde makes it worse. So retrograde makes it better. And you can see, there we go. There we have our intercept with an itsy bitsy teeny weeny 9.5 meter per second burn, albeit our intercept isn't going to be for over two years. But if you were working with probes or something like that, this can be an effective way to get yourself in and around all kinds of planets very cheaply. Let's focus in on Kerbin and see if we can not make this encounter a little bit more fortuitous for us. Okay, so we're looking at this first maneuver here. Again, little changes. Whoops, that actually did too much. Here we come. And I'm just going to get it as close to Kerbin as we can. I can see I'm going to need to do a normal correction, but now is not the time for that. Actually, I kind of like, might bring it right up into the plane there like that. That looks pretty good. We're going to be buzzing by just outside the moon's orbit, but we'll fix that ahead of time. Now it's time to do this teeny weeny little burn. Okay, this is only a four second burn, so I'm going to start early, maybe only go to about a third throttle. I want to try and do this burn as accurately as I can. Unfortunately, because of the maneuver that's after this one, watching from Kerbin's view doesn't do anything because that view doesn't get updated until this current maneuver is deleted. Okay, let's see what that got us. So closing up and looking at what we have here. Yeah, we still got our intercept. We still got this coming up again over two years from now, but that's okay. <laughs> so let's now time warp to, now don't bother using the alarm clock to set an alarm for this SOI change because it won't see it this far into the future. But what we can do is set an alarm for this maneuver right here. So why don't we do that? We'll create an alarm for that maneuver that's coming up. Just stop, and that'll at least stop us on the right orbit. Unfortunately, that's only after about a year and a half of time warping. This is where one more times 10 step on the time warp would be handy. So yes, although we spent much less time around Eve compared to when we got the capture last episode, we end up spending much, much more time orbiting the sun in interplanetary space. The upside though is how little I spent to get that curb and intercept. Remember the corrections I did in Eve's SOI could have been completely avoided if I had dealt with that during the mid-course correction well before getting to Eve. And the burn I did at my closest approach to Eve could have been avoided if I was okay with not getting into near space about Eve. So if I ignore my messing about around Eve, I've only spent 259 meters per second on the plane change and 20 meters per second to get the curb and intercept. And it could have been even better. Most, if not all of that 259 meter per second burn could have been dealt with by adjusting my trajectory around Eve. Again, well before the Eve encounter. All you have to do is look at the trajectory after leaving Eve's SOI, select Kerbin as a target, and get the AN or DN to be close to the resulting apoapsis near Kerbin's orbit. After doing this mission again, I managed to completely avoid the plane change burn, and after leaving Eve's SOI, I only performed two burns for my final Kerbin intercept. One a measly 3.8 meters per second, and the other a similarly measly 6.5 meters per second. 
And why stop there? Let's go for Duna. I'm even getting a bit of a moon bump here. By the way, if you are not seeing enough trajectories into the future while doing this, just go into the settings and push up the conic patch limit. Now I can take what boost I can from Kerbin and then look for another Kerbin intercept to get myself to Duna, or I could spend a little fuel at Kerbin's closest approach to boost the orbit. But while doing that, I noticed a second Kerbin encounter happening anyway, so I figured, what the heck, let's aim for Drez now. The one thing you have to be when doing this kind of thing is flexible. It's very difficult to plan all this stuff out, and you just want to grab the opportunities as they arise. But I'm hoping you get the idea of how you could do this in your own games, should you choose. In the meantime, I want to take this opportunity to express my appreciation for my Patreon patrons and YouTube members, especially to my most recent patron, Andy Brown. And if you would also like to directly support what I am doing with this channel, you will find the appropriate links in the down below, or if you'd rather, simply like and subscribe so that the almighty algorithm will be more likely to send more of my stuff your way in the future. But getting back to the mission with Jeb and Bob. Close that. Okay, we are now at that maneuver. We don't need it anymore. Remember, it was just to mark what orbit we needed to be on. So now we're getting our maneuver proper in about 207 days. But what we want to do is tweak our encounter with Kerbin. So we're going to put a maneuver around here. Again, about halfway along. I guess about a quarter of an orbit or halfway between the periapsis and the apoapsis. I want to focus our view on Kerbin and tweak in this maneuver. Bringing in our periapsis. Going to go for about... I'm going to go for about 35 kilometers on that periapsis. Maybe bring it southwards a little bit. Oh, that looks pretty good. Tweak down that sensitivity even more. There we go. That looks pretty good to me. And after performing this 6.2 meter per second burn, all I had left to do was time warp until we were back in Kerbin's SOI. While I'm doing so, I want to draw attention to a common bug that happens when you use the game's alarm clock to warn you of upcoming interplanetary encounters. The natural thing to do is to create an alarm, select SOI change, and then simply add the alarm. But a common experience is that you will find yourself often blowing right past the alarm, sometimes even missing the encounter entirely. So what's happening? It is very common to see encounters change or even completely disappear while time warping. And if that happens, the time of an SOI alarm will change right along with it. This results in the game not stopping the time warp at the time you set it at. The solution? Don't use the SOI change feature of the alarm clock for interplanetary encounters. Instead, note the time to the SOI change and set a manual time alarm entering in that time. Now the game will hard stop time warping at that time, whether the encounter disappears or not, and once the time warp is stopped, the encounter will reappear once again. And with Jeb and Bob now making their way down to Kerbin's atmosphere, why don't I take this opportunity to go over the main takeaways from this episode? The central idea was how to fly by Eve without getting a capture and still manage a return to Kerbin. Along the way, we discovered that, although this technique has us spending significantly more time in interplanetary space, it has the advantage of dramatically reducing the fuel cost of our Kerbin return. Moreover, this technique can be applied to transfers to other planets as well, allowing you to cheaply move between planets of the Kerbal system, provided you are willing to spend the extra time on the transfers. Finally, I looked at a common bug on interplanetary transfers where encounters may disappear while time warping, potentially messing up any alarms you have set. Using a manual alarm instead works around this problem. And with that, I'm going to be drawing this episode to a close. Join me next episode where I'll be returning to jet flight, looking at building crafts capable of reaching the upper atmosphere. I hope to see you then.